Hello and welcome to the video. This video is all about this thing here. This is the AR wing. For those of you that haven't watched it already, I'm doing a complete series building out this wing with an F405 wing flight controller with Arduplane and I also did a build with an omnibus board in a much smaller wing as well. I've been having a fantastic time with Arduplane as it now supports these third party boards as the Pilot project calls them. Now one of the things that you probably spotted was a week or two ago I showed the Maiden footage and the Maiden was okay but the wing was a little underpowered and this was something that I have to say thank you to all of you that kind of got in touch as part of the series and just said be careful, uh, there's not quite enough oomph with the supplied motor and prop. And uh, although I was kind of expecting that, it means that it's going to make a perfect little video. Because this video is all about what I've done to kind of figure out what prop I can put on that motor and ESC combo to give me more thrust without overloading the ESC and the motor and turning everything into a hot mess. So if you're interested in doing this for a model, and most models I tend to get in these days are very powerful. Uh, some of the ZOHD stuff that I've had in, um, like the Rebel GT and stuff, are horrendously powered. They literally drag themselves out your hand when you go to launch it. But I'm about to do some auto launch videos with Ardu Pilot, and I wanted to have enough oomph for the wing. Sorry to start using technical words like oomph this early in the video, so that it would take off okay. Because the only way we got this thing to fly last time is, as you've seen, is for my uh, my chucker, Ross, big thank you to Ross for that, uh, to give it a blooming good throw as I give it full power and just caught it before it hit the grass. It needs a little bit more than that. So I need a probably about a quarter, third as much thrust uh, just to avoid that dip and to be able to climb nicely into the air. Once it's in the air and flying, it flies really good. So to start, we need to know where we are actually starting from. So the first thing is, is we need to figure out how much current the model currently uses at full throttle. Now, luckily, the on-screen display was running. I was recording it for that, so I can see exactly how much amperage is being pulled by the ESC and motor in that 100% throttle launch attempt. Next thing you need to think about is what's the capacity of the ESC and motor. Now, this thing has a 30 amp ESC in it, and the motor in it... Uh, I can't find the exact details for this specific motor, but it looks like anywhere between about 27, 28 amps uh, should be fine. So we have a 10 amp uh, overhead here that we can use to produce a little bit thrust without stressing those components too much. If that wasn't the case, then I would almost certainly have to change out the ESC or the motor. But I don't want to do this. I just want to change the prop. Also need to have a look for how much room there is on the bigger prop. Now, I've cut some recesses in the back of my wing to make room. It was a bit tight, but when the prop is producing thrust, the ends of the prop are naturally pushed up uh, in towards the wing because it's trying to push wind backwards. The props are pushed forwards. And I didn't want that to chew the back of the wing up, so I've just cut a little bit of relief. So do think about how much room there is. It might be if there's landing gear, you don't want to have props that are bigger than the landing gear can support because you don't want the props slamming into the ground when you come to land. Next thing to think about is, are you going to be changing the battery voltage? One thing I see a lot of the field, and part of the reason that I'm making this video, is I do hear pilots saying two classic things. One is, oh, it hasn't got enough power, I'll just stick a bigger prop on it. And the second one is, oh, it hasn't got enough power on 3S, I'll just bang a 4S in, that'll probably do it. Not realising that there is a huge difference in the amount of thrust that's been created from the same prop and motor and what that means in terms of the power being pulled from the battery and ultimately the current which can be too much and overwhelm both. So on my particular setup I know that it was pulling about 17.4 amps at full throttle because we have that from the on-screen display. I also know that there is room for a 6 inch prop. I could push it to a 7 inch but I want to keep it relatively compact um, because of that, I'm also thinking of reducing from a three-bladed prop to a two-bladed prop. The less blades you have on a prop, the more efficient it is. So that should offset some of the additional current that's needed for the bigger prop. So I'm going to go with a classic two-bladed prop at six inches. So the first of all, I need to figure out how much air is being moved 
by one revolution of the prop. Now this is a three by five inch by five inch pitch prop. So I need to figure out what the diameter of the circle that the prop is creating and also for one revolution, how much air that looks like. So essentially we're trying to figure out that well how big this is. So if you think of like a big can of beans, we're trying to figure out what the volume of air is in square inches because that's the measurement that the prop is being measured in. It's five inches by five inch pitch. So the first thing we have to do is we have to use a little bit of maths from school. So to find the area of the circle, we have to multiply pi by the radius squared. The radius is half the diameter, which is five inches. So it's pi, which is 3.142 times the radius, two and a half times two and a half, which gives us 19.64 square inches of area that the prop is actually covering. Now to figure out the actual depth of the cylinder, we then need to multiply that by the prop because every revolution, it's actually going to cut a chunk of air out and that air is going to be pushed backwards. And that in this instance is five inches. So if we multiply that area of the circle via the height, then we get 98.12 cubic inches and that is the comparison so that is what the system is currently using so it's just under 100 cubic inches it is taking about 17.4 amps to move now i don't want to change the esc i don't want to change the motor so what size prop do i actually need now i'm going to use a 16 prop so i'm uh, going to guess at about four and a half inches and figure out the same bit of math and then see how much more or less air that's moving than the 98 cubic inches that we've just figured out for the original prop. So this time it's a six inch prop with a 4.5 inch pitch. It's actually a seven inch prop and I've just cut the last half inch off each end to make it slightly bull nosy. Uh, so this is 3.142, which is pi times the radius squared. The radius is half the diameter, which is three. That gives us pi times three times three which gives us 28.28 square inches. So the size that the prop is cutting is 44% more. So that's an awful lot more than the original smaller prop. And hopefully you can see just by increasing the diameter by one inch, doesn't sound like a lot, but it's nearly 50% more area being handled by the prop. Next thing we need to do then is figure out the rest of that volume. So let's multiply that area by the pitch of the blade, four and a half inches in this instance. And that means that it's moving 127.25 cubic inches of air every rotation. Now that works out at 29% more air being moved per rotation than the three bladed prop. But the question that I've got is, does that mean that it'll pull about 29% more amperage from the battery? That would take it from about 17.4 to 22 and a half. There's only one way to find out. So here I am on the model. I'm just going to fire it up again, fully charged battery in the back garden. I'm holding it static with my hand as though I was going to throw it, blip the throttle, and it's handling itself at about 24 amps, just under 22 amps. And I can feel just by holding it in my hand as I'm blipping the throttle with a new prop, it has an awful lot more push on it to try and get into the air. So that's gonna be perfect for the next video where we're gonna play with Auto Launch. Couple of things to think about as part of this. So hopefully that's an interesting way, it kind of explains how I calculate how much more prop um, I need and try and use a little bit of math. Uh, that kind of stuff was actually taught to me by Lucian Miller, um, who is a fantastic guy that used to be on lots of podcasts a while ago. Uh, really smart guy. It's a really great way to figure out the difference between two prop motor setups. Now, if you wanted to compare whether what the difference between a 3S and a 4S battery is, or the difference between a 2300 kV and a 2600 kV motor is, you can work that out. Because once you know the volume, per revolution of the prop, you just multiply that by the KV number and the voltage of the battery, and then that gives you the two comparisons and you can work it out as well. Do remember though that larger props do need a little bit more balancing, so take your time with that. Remember that larger props also have a bigger chance of hitting the ground, so do keep that in mind when you're coming into land. Um, I might put the brake on this particular wing just to make sure that when I cut the throttle, the prop actually stops rather than continue to rotate and potentially be dragged into the grass or stick into the ground on landing. 
always test the results. Um, I was uh, a little bit out, probably 10% out on the current estimation using this very quick and dirty method. If you haven't got an OSD, use a watt meter or a current meter so you can test on the bench that everything is okay. Uh, with this setup, it works perfectly with this AR wing. So if you don't want to change the motor and ESC, then a 6 by 45 inch prop will do the job with those little recesses cut out. And lastly, I do find it funny when I use these kind of things. This is the stuff that I learned when I was at college and university that I thought I'm never ever gonna use. Pi R squared, Pi R squared H, why would I want to know the volume of a cylinder? And it's kind of cool to find instances, even this point in my life, where I actually need to use that kind of algebra. Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.